my dear friends in Christ, we are going to take a quick reading from Revelation chapter 7, verse 9 to 17. The book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9 to 17. I'm reading from the New King James Version. After these things, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and they crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, and the elders, and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat for the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will suffer them and lead them to living foundations or fountains of waters. And we wipe away every tear from their eyes. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, O Lord. My dear friends in Christ, the reading we have just read as taken from Revelation chapter 7 is principally talking about the holy ones, people who wash their garments in the blood of the Lamb. God opened the eyes of his child and he saw in this vision, as John wrote, that a multitude of people of different languages, people of different tribes and of different ethnicity, all of them came together in a great multitude and they were praising God. They were wearing white robes crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne. And the old angels came around the throne, and the elders, the 24 elders in heaven also came and joined them to praise God. And with one voice, angels and the saints were praising God and glorifying God, for he had brought salvation to his people. This was a vision that John saw while he was in Patmos. <laughs> he saw us. And then while John was wondering what 
has come of this vision. What does this vision mean? Wondering, who are these people wearing white robes? People dressed in sparkling white. And so, an angel of the Lord came and explained to him. The Bible says, in Revelation chapter 7 verse 13, Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where do they come from? And then the angel who asked that question also answered, These are the ones who came out of the great tribulation, who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of Jesus. They washed their dirty linens in the blood of the Lamb. And now is their day of reward. And God had come to reward them. My dear friends in Christ, who are those people that are wearing white? The Bible called them the saints, the saints of God. Those who did the will of God while on earth. While on earth, they faced tribulations. John said, these were, I mean, the elders said to John, these were people who washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb through tribulation. They passed through and they came out of great tribulation. But they did not give up. <laughs> Many of them were slaughtered. Many of them were put in the fire. But they did not give up. You see that? <laughs> Many of them were rejected by the people, but they did not give up. They trusted God. My dear friends in Christ, God is talking to us tonight. We're not alone in this journey. All the disciples of Jesus, apart from St. John, the apostle, the beloved apostle, all other ones died out of tribulation. You see that? So was Peter. Peter was crucified, but he was crucified upside down. While on earth, he was crucified upside down. Today, he is a saint in heaven, and we call him Saint Peter. So was Andrew. He was Terribly scourged. And they tied him. And nailed him to the cross. In fact, they tied him. You know, rather than nailing him to the cross. And so he suffered for a long time before dying. Tribulations. So was James, the son of Zebedee. Otherwise known as, known as James the Greater. Acts of Apostles, chapter 12, verse 1 to 19, says that James was killed with a sword. You see that? The newly appointed governor of Judea, Herod Agrippa, decided to ingratiate himself with the Romans, with the Romans, you know, by persecuting leaders of the Christian faith. And so after arresting John, he just had to place him on the table of execution. He died by the sword. John was the only one out of all the disciples who did not die a violent death. He passed away peacefully in, in Patmos. And actually, he lived a long, a long life. He saw age. 
Philip died violently, he was thrown into the prison, he was scourged, maltreated, and then eventually he was crucified. So was Bartholomew, a man full of passion of Jesus, preached in several countries, including India. <laughs> it was believed that he translated the Gospel of Matthew for believers. But he was beaten mercilessly, and they crucified him. And he, do you know what? He was skinned alive, skinned alive, and then beheaded. That was how Batrumi died. Judas, I mean Thomas, also died violently. He was murdered by running him through a, a spear. I want you to see the people we call saints. The people we, we ask them to pray for us what they passed through. Matthew, we know, was a tax collector, but he was martyred to death. You see, history says, makes it clear that he was stabbed at the back. And he was destroyed. His life was taken away. So was James, the son of Alpheus, also known as James the Less. <laughs> Jesus was beaten and stoned by persecutors and then killed. Okay? By hitting him on the head with a club. Can you imagine killing somebody by hitting him on, on the head with a club? That was how James died. What of that use? Or that was called Jews, Jude. <laughs> he was also crucified. You see that? Simon, the Canaanite, also known as the Zealot, Simon Zealot. A man full of passion, passion of Christ Jesus also died violently. And so on and so forth. What do these people have in common? What they had in common was that they passed through tribulation. Tribulations. But even though that the world rejected them, yet they had an eternal reward. Jesus has promised that those who put their trust in him will not put to shame. And he will wash them with clean with his blood. And he has will give them the reward of blood of a a blood washed garment, making the garment white as snow. And will call them saints. Today the church is recognizing the saints. People who had left the world to attend the vision of God in heaven. People who have run this race and they was able to make it successfully. Today we are recognizing them. They are witnesses to us and for us that heaven exists. That is possible for a mortal man to make heaven. So they are our witnesses. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 tells us that we have a great cloud of witnesses. Wonderful cloud of witnesses. So whenever you think of what you are passing through, whatever thing you are passing through right today, just know that you have many witnesses 
cloud of witnesses. So the saints play the roles of witnesses to us. No matter what you are passing through today, God is allowing you to pass through that so you will be somebody's witness. Today's Paul, whom you know passed through a lot, is also a witness to us, testifying to the goodness of the Lord. <laughs> Jesus. So today, the saints play the role of witnesses to us. A witness that emphasizes the fact that heaven is not only a reality, but for you. And that's the reward that everyone who puts his trust in the Lord will always have. No matter what you pass through, no matter the troubles, no matter the commotion, always tell yourself, I know I have a cloud of witnesses in heaven. It's very important to have witnesses. Even in the judicial system, the system usually seeks for witnesses. You see, justice cannot be done without witnesses providing evidence for the court to act upon. You see that? So God has provided the saints to be witnesses for us. That heaven is real. Many of us remember the story of the transfiguration on Mount Tabor where Jesus transfigured and uh, he he was wearing a, a white apparel. And uh, Peter, James, and John saw him. <laughs> where Moses and uh, Elijah appeared to bear witness to the Messiahship of Jesus Christ, to the apostles. And so by that very transfiguration experience, the faith of Peter, James, and John were quickened, they were strengthened. Because shortly Jesus was to pass through a passion, was to be crucified. But they had to be given that vision to see that the death of Jesus wouldn't mean the end of Christian faith wouldn't be the end of their faith, but that there is a glory that awaits everyone who puts their trust in the Lord. Mother Francis Christ, I don't know what your experience in life is, I don't know what you are passing through right now, but always know if God has allowed you to pass through that, know that He is preparing you to be a witness for somebody. You are to be a witness someday. But when you cannot follow the Lord, when you give up, then how can somebody have, how can you be a witness for somebody? How can you be a witness of God? Do you know that God really has created us that we shall also be witnesses of His glory, of His majesty? I want to share with you a dream um, I had some uh, long years ago. The deep dream comes back to mind just as this ministry is going on. And in this dream, there was a big house. I, I could not imagine the side of that house. It was like, I mean, I couldn't see the end. I just couldn't see the end. But you enter a house from one door. So I came into the house, and I saw that it was a big warehouse. There was no end to it. And I saw people, great number of people, all of them were sitting down quietly. If a pin fell on the ground, you would hear it. All of them were sitting down. And all of them were wearing white Clothes, very white, immaculate white. No stain. That, that white, I have to use that word, immaculate. And it, you see everywhere white sitting down. 
And all of them were facing a particular part of their building, the northern part of the building. And that was the side where the door to come into the, that building was. So in other words, the door was just by the, towards the altar. So because I, the door was towards, by the side of the altar, when I came in, the first thing I saw was this crowd. And I was just walking to go and join them. Because I was near to the altar, by my right hand, I saw a majestic altar. I saw a majestic altar. And look at a man. A very handsome man. Sitting on a throne at the altar. The man was so huge. Very handsome. Wearing white. And he was sitting on a throne. And he was the only person at the altar. When I turned right and saw him, he stood up immediately. I was still walking towards the crowd to have my seat. But when I saw this man on seeing me getting up and with a smile coming towards me, the staircase, the, the altar had something like a staircase. Yeah, something like, you know, step, not a staircase, like a step, you know, to walk down the altar. When I saw him walking, you know, you know how you, you know that when somebody is coming towards you and uh, the person is, is smiling, you know, of course, the person wants to come, you know, greet you, so you cannot continue to walk away. So that was the picture at that point in time. So I had to stop. I had to stop going to the crowd to sit down. And then while the man was walking, but I felt that, oh, I'm not even worried that I should stand here waiting for him to come. So I said, walking towards him. So we met at the, at the base of the altar. Something surprised me. The moment that man stood up, that great crowd, wearing white, all of them, as if they were remote controlled, all of them in unison stood up. As if to say, who are we that our master should stand up and we sit down? So when he stood up, all of them stood up. And so when the man came close and then I saw he was extending his hand, but eventually it was a hog and he was embracing me and he was telling me, keep it up, keep it up, you know, something like that. And then all of a sudden I was hearing praises going on, heavenly praises. And those innumerable people were praising God. And so one of them asked a the question, who is this man that our master gave this kind of recognition? Remember, at that point in time, I didn't even understand what was going on. And so, the other person, the, he was asking a question. Then, one of the people who, were, who was there wearing a white, so, uh, do you remember the day that our master called us on a meeting and told us about a man on earth, I repeat, a man on earth who was passing through tribulations, passing through or deals. There was nothing that the devil did not do to him to, for him to give up his Christian faith. Don't you remember the day that our master told us about that story of how the devil tormented one young man on earth terribly, forcing him to give up and yield to him. But this young man said no. That he would continue to serve Jesus, no matter what it costs him. And I hear that, that other person say, oh, yes, 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 that's true, that's true, I remember, I remember. He said, that is him. Today, our master have come to give me a reward. That was when he thought of me, that this was Jesus. That was when he thought of me, that the people I saw wearing white, 
there were dissents. And they, they were praising God. They were rejoicing. They were shouting hallelujah. That finally he made it. That our Lord has come to give me a reward. The joy there was so wonderful. People of different races. People of different cultures. People of different colors. But that day, people, all of them were speaking the same language. I am telling you a vision I had. Not what I read in a book. My name is Christ. When I came out of that spiritual experience, I wished to go back. I didn't want to. It was so wonderful. It was ethereal. It is not that the kind of revelations you have. You don't want. You don't want to come back, come out of it. You want to remain there. Heaven is real. I repeat. Heaven is real. This was my own story. Years ago. Perhaps you have had your own story. But in this story, I see the reflection of what John saw in Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 to 17. A great multitude. He said in Revelation chapter 7 verse 9, Behold, I saw a great multitude which no one, which no one could number of all nations and tribes and peoples and, lang- and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes with their palm with, with palm branches in their hands. I didn't see palm branches that day, though. But it didn't change the fact that there was a reward for those who persevere and put their trust in the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, I don't know what the situation you are passing through now, what it is like. But always remember, that God has a reward for you. He has a reward for our faithfulness. I mean, I know I struggle. I am a sinner. And I'm asking God every day, help me to live within the circle of your will. I say, Lord, every day I say, Lord, please forgive me my sins. Be merciful to me. Because only by His mercy shall we see His face. My dear people of God, the Almighty God is talking to us tonight. No matter what we are passing through today, no matter the great tribulation we are passing through today, there is a great crowd of witnesses. Those who are passed through this great tribulation, and they are now in heaven praying for us. They want you to be like them. They want you to be in heaven like with them. When we hear of asking saints to pray for us, a lot of people don't really understand that, and so they seem to, 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 to not to believe it, that it's real, that, that you can ask saints to pray for you. And people don't have a problem telling them where upon how sinful as I am to pray for them, but they are not comfortable with a saint in heaven asking them to pray for you. We need to understand things, my dear friends in Christ. It is absolutely right and correct that we should ask the saints, those who have made it to heaven, to intercede for us. I want to share with you this quick story. A Reverend Father, um, I was reading what he wrote some uh, two days ago or so. And he said that there was a day he was in a tr- he was about to sleep but he, he said he was not actually in deep sleep but he saw his aunt who came and sat by his his sleeping bed and called him father 
no matter what you pass through in this priesthood, bear it and look unto Jesus. Never yield to the demands of the enemy. Do you hear what I'm saying? I will keep praying for you. And this vision disappeared. Only for him to call this his aunt and find out that the aunt died just a few minutes earlier. This also senses sends the signal to us that life doesn't just end with our death. It also sends a signal that the sense when the when a, a righteous man dies, it doesn't end there. He's going to heaven. Or she is going to heaven. The saints want to see you make it to heaven. So today being the all saints day is a great day for us to always inculcate the community of heaven in your prayers. Calling on the help of heaven. Calling on the angels of God for help. Because David in Psalm 91, you see the way he was he calling on the angels. Said, the Lord will send his angels to guide me. That my feet shall not fall or dash against any stone. He will send his angels to hold you. The ministry of angels are so wonderful. The ministry of the saints are also so wonderful. <laughs> Jesus. Some years ago, on a, a day like this, on All Saints Day, and I said this not to boost of any form, of course, God knows my mind, but I just want to encourage us by sharing some of these stories of how on All Saints Day of some, some years ago, I can't remember that year again, I stood with my two eyes, I saw St. Peter. I knew it was him. I recognized him. I saw him live. I saw the saints, so many of them. Not as dead people, as living people who are on passion to see you come to heaven and join them. Heaven is a reality. <laughs> there was a day I, sh I shared an experience with my wife. At that time I was single, but I was sharing with her what happens in years before I got married to her. And there was this evening, I was going back to campus, and the uh, on a second thought, I said, okay, let me go to the ch church just to, instead of just passing the church, let me just get into the church and uh, pray before the blessed sacrament. Uh, you know, even though I was in the church before at that point, uh, like in the, in the morning hours, but I said, let me just say hi to the Lord Jesus. You know how sometimes you, you just want to <laughs> make fun, you know. I said, I went to the blessed sacrament and just said, Lord, I'm just passing by. I just want to say hi to you. I just want to pray. I uh, have a little time with you. I just had a short time. It doesn't be a long time. And I left. I left, and as I was walking on the road, walking to the hostel, to the campus, I found out that I was, I don't know how to explain this, like I was at a point A, but I saw myself walking at a point B ahead, like half a mile ahead, where I would be half a mile ahead. I saw myself walking there, and I was still passing through a crowd of people. People were still moving everywhere, and I was there, bodily moving, but spiritual, I was some other place moving. And I saw a man with a gun who was waiting for me to shoot me, but there was a man who was also be between me and that man with a gun. And at the moment I was walking, I saw a crowd of people I think they could not their faces, but they were praying for me. Even though they were far away from me, but I, I, could, I, could, I could hear them somehow praying to God to help Uwakwe to, not, to not to be hurt, praying for me. I, I, and as I, I was able to pass through that point, and, um, and then I came back to the flesh, and I found that I had moved some distance. And I didn't even know how I moved that distance, passing through a market. Hmm. I hope you understand what I'm talking about, dude. Now, when I go to that place, I, I saw myself that point B. Behold, look at a man with a gun. Now, this is physical now. 
a man with a gun who surrounded an, a, another man who was just walking on his way. And they took all his money. I think he was at, he was at a gunpoint. I came there, I saw two of them. But this man did not point his gun at me. He didn't shoot me. I just passed by. As if, as if nothing happened. I even stopped and looked at them. I said, to be sure. On a narrow track. And then I, I continued to move. And then I started praying for that man, knowing fully well that he was in danger. I started praying for him, for God to deliver him. And then some seconds later, that man now ran to me. I mean, the one who was now robbed. Um, it was robbery, let alone, because I, the young man told me that he was. He said, brother, look at. Do you know that I was robbed? That man stopped me with a gun. And took all my money. Pray God that he wasn't shot. But I remember that this was where I was in the spirit. And somebody with a gun was waiting to shoot me. And look at some men, women. I didn't know them, but they were praying for me. A crowd of people. My dear friends in Christ, God is talking to us. Embrace the ministry of the saints. Embrace the ministry of the angels. When we start a prayer, we call on the angels to come down. We call on angel Michael to come down. Look at what happened to Daniel. Daniel prayed and God answered him. But he didn't get his blessings. The angel sent to bring his blessings was already kidnapped and detained. And even imprisoned. And so he couldn't get the blessings. But God had to send the angel, Michael, the minister of the angels, to come and deliver that angel. We need the ministry of the angels in heaven. We need the ministry of the saints in heaven. If we must make this heaven. <laughs> Jesus. And so it's a time to thank God for what God has done in our lives and for what He has done that is waiting for manifestation. We we'll give Him all the glory in the name of Jesus. There is nothing in heaven that is not holy. Everything in heaven is holy. You see that? And we cannot go to heaven without holiness. In fact, holiness is a compulsory requirement to see God. <laughs> the Bible tells us that nothing unholy shall be, shall, shall be in heaven. Hebrews 12 14 says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and uh, be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews 12 verse 14. Yes, my Lord. My dear friends in Christ, today is November 1, the All Saints Day. God is bringing this message to us today, encouraging us to be people of prayer, to be strong in prayer, never to give up, and at the same time, to ask for His grace. To see us through the month of November. My dear people of God, we need the grace of God this month. No matter what we are passing through, may God help us. May God strengthen us. May the angels of God see us through this month. May they be with us. May our guardian angels continue to be with us. May the saints continue to intercede for us. In the name of Jesus, every trap that is set for us this month. May God give us victory that we shall not fall into the traps of the enemies. In the name of Jesus, we pray for divine restoration. We pray for mercy of God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Begin to call on the Lord now. I pray that the angels and saints shall accompany you this month, shall be with you this month. That no trap of the devil shall encroach your territory. 
that you shall not fall into the trap of the enemies in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. The Bible says in Psalm 1, 2, 4, verse 8, that our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Our help is coming from heaven. May God send me help this month. May God send me help this month. Ask him to send you help this month. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. Behold, now is the day of salvation. How about now, today, this month, is my month of salvation. In the name of Jesus. This month is my month of testimonies. As the saints gave testimonies by their life, may my life also be a life of testimonies this month. In the name of Jesus. And according to Isaiah chapter 46 verse 4, Father, O oh Lord, carry me and deliver me this month. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Heavenly Father, you are a holy God. We desire to be holy also, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be people of holiness. Help us this month to be holy people, to do holy things, and to live in holiness. In the name of Jesus. Father, we desire holiness. And we ask you, Lord, to help us to be holy. For without you, there's nothing we can do. Father, help us to live a to be living saints on earth, Lord. To be living angels on earth, Lord. Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Father, strengthen me. Papa, strengthen your people. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Father, oh Lord, this month, set me apart unto you. Set me apart unto you. When you are set apart unto God, then it means you are consecrated to the Lord. It means that you are for the service of the Lord. Open your mouth and pray and say, Lord Almighty, help me, Lord, that in this month, everything I will do will testify that I am consecrated to you. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Jesus. I will live my life in Christ this month. I am hidden with the Christ in God this month. In the name of Jesus, it is well with me this month. It is well with my family this month. It is well with your children this month. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Every spirit of death programmed against me this month, programmed against my life and ministry this month, shall not succeed in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. I will live my life this month pleasing the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. I will live my life in praising the Lord this month. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Masha Karabu. My people begin to pray now. Yes, my Lord. My Lord and my Father. Help me this month, O oh Lord. To live with a clean heart. To live the life of prayer. Let my prayer life be stronger this month. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. If there is any sin in me, oh Lord. Papa, remove it from me. Papa, detach them from me. In the name of Jesus. Every sin locking within me. Every sin hiding in my heart. Father, remove them from my life this month. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Every sin in my life, O oh Lord, root them out of my life this month. In the name of Jesus. I want to be closer to you than ever. I want to be part and parcel of you, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. My people pray that prayer. Jesus. Help me, Lord, to have clean hands this month. To have pure heart this month. To live in your presence this month. To do everything this month in your presence. To live within the circle of your will. For so the saints live their lives. And they were clothed with the garment of glory. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. 
Purify my heart, O Lord. Cleanse my inner thoughts. Examine the very motives behind my actions and attitude. Father, may everything be godly in my life this month. No matter what I'm passing through, Father, I give everything to you. Whatever the cross you have given to me to carry this month, Father, may I carry that cross with the grace, trusting in you. Jesus, Father, I desire to live in holiness of heart. I desire to live in holiness of heart. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, give me your grace, O oh Lord. The grace to follow you this month. When you want me to stop, Father, give me the grace to stop at the red light. At the red light of, light, light of life. Give me the grace to stop when you want me to stop. Give me the grace to go when you want me to go. Give me the boldness to say no when you want me to say no. And to say yes when you want me to say yes. Father, I want you to run my life this month. I am handing over my life and the life of everyone in my life, in my family, in my place of work, even in my parish, even in the ministry I belong to. I hand over everyone to you, O Lord. Father, run my life this month. Run our life this month. In the name of Jesus. May everything we do this month please you, O Lord. Help me, Lord, to please you by my conduct this month. Father, let this month be the month that I will be so close to you than ever. In the name of Jesus. Aha! Uh -huh. Jesus! My people begin to pray now. Begin to call on Him. Ask Him this month to make you to experience overwhelming testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Ask Him to help you to have an, an overwhelming testimony. In the name of Jesus. Jesus! Every plan of the devil against me this month must fail in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, I cover my month with the blood of Jesus. I cover this month with the blood of Jesus. Every second and minute and hour of this month, I soak the blood of Jesus. I cover the days and weeks of this month with the blood of Jesus. Every message that will deliver in the prayer line this month, we soak in the blood of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus, I will make it this month. I will be rooted in Christ this month. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Papa, touch me, Lord. Papa, touch me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, I reject evil this month. I reject crisis this month. I reject accident this month. In the name of Jesus. In this very month, I reject the garment of shame. I wear the garment of righteousness. I wear the saintly garment. The garment of glory. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. I wear the garment of love this month. In the name of Jesus. This month are very close to the angels and to the saints. In the name of Jesus. This month the angels will pay me visit. The saints will pay me visit. I will see them in my visions and I will communicate with them. They are my closest ancestors. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. The saints are my closest ancestors. I declare it and I claim it. I belong to the family of Jesus this month. In the name of Jesus. I will make it this month. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer. Yes, my Lord. It is well with me. In this month, it is well with me. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 10, Tell the righteous that it is well with him. I tell you today, it is well with you. In the name of Jesus, in this very month, I will experience the freedom that comes from the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians 3, verse 17 says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Let the freedom of God be my testimony. 
May the Holy Spirit locate me this month. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. This month, something that will make me to testify will come alive. I will sing praise and I will rejoice this month. In the name of Jesus. This is my month of joy. In the name of Jesus. In this 11th month, 11th hour miracle will happen in my life. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer. Oh, yes, my Lord. I will be in Christ Jesus this month. Great things will happen in my life this month. People will see the testimony of God in my life this month. In the name of Jesus. Everything I sow this month, I will reap dividends. I will reap merit a hundredfold over. Every seed of testimony I sow this month, I will reap the testimonies. I will harvest them. This month, I will not miss any member of my family. At the end of the month, we shall take account and we shall be complete. And no one shall miss. For the Bible says, Numbers chapter 31 verse 49. We counted and no one is missing. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Let the blood of Jesus make way for me where there is no way this month. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Every Goliath standing on my way this month that I will not make it. I command that Goliath to be paralyzed, to be crushed, to be subdued in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. Call on the blood of Jesus. Call on the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus touch you. Let the blood of Jesus touch you. Let the blood of Jesus touch you. Let the blood of Jesus be with you. In this very month, the blood of Jesus is my companion. The angels are my companions. The saints are my companions. The blessed sacrament is my companion. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is my companion. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Jesus. I will make it this month. I will make it this month. In the name of Jesus. I will make it this month. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, in the book of Nehemiah, starting from chapter 1, we read about the story of a man called Nehemiah, who had a very good job. Everything was going well for Nehemiah. He was working in the king's palace. He was eating everything he wanted. But my dear friends in Christ, something took away the joy of the prophet. He heard a bad news about Jerusalem. That the walls of Jerusalem had fallen. That the city that used to be a beautiful city is now an ugly city. Because the enemy came and they devastated the land. And so Nehemiah, Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 1 had a concern for Jerusalem. <laughs> Jesus. Nehemiah went into prayers. He fasted for five months. What was he asking God? He said, God, I want to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. But how can I, I get the permission of the king? The king, Jeremiah knew that the king would not allow him to go to Jerusalem. And so Nehemiah was praying, asking God to touch the heart of the king. <laughs> 
Jesus. And so, one day when God answered his prayers, and uh, God touched the heart of the king, in Nehemiah chapter 2, and the king granted Nehemiah his heart desire. He gave him a leave of absence to go to Jerusalem and build the city. He also gave him men that will accompany him and help him. He also gave him a letter that will permit him to get wood from, from, from the trees, the best of the trees. And so he left. He got everything he wanted, including the letter to the governor of Trans Euphrates. And there, he was able to get everything he wanted to accomplish, accomplish that project. Remember, the project was to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. When Nehemiah came to Jerusalem, in the night, he selected some few men, few responsible men, men he could confide in. And he told them, look, you know what? Let us go and inspect Jerusalem's wall. And so in the night, they took off. And they did that for three days. They went in the night because they didn't want people to, to see them. They didn't want distraction. They didn't want enemies to see them. It is very important that in our Christian journey that we select people who will be part and parcel of our journey of faith. And I'm praying that this month that God will bring angels that will help you to accomplish that project. That God will grant you favor uh, that the same favor he granted to Nehemiah may he grant you that favor this month. As Nehemiah found the favor from the king may God grant you favor in in that place, your place of work, in the family you are married, into or from. May God help you. May God speak on your behalf. Whoever that is supposed to be a child to bring your blessings to you, may they lose sleep until they locate you in the name of Jesus. Esther chapter 6 verse 1 says that the king could not sleep all night. <laughs> because the Lord took away the sleep from his eye. Simply because there was a man called Mordecai that God wanted the king to bless. And that was how the king blessed Mordecai. Because God put in his heart, you have to bless somebody. I am praying that the God will do the same thing in your life this month. That anyone that is supposed to be an angel to bring your blessings to you, may God make it possible. Even if it means denying them sleep. May they lose sleep until they bring your blessings to you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Nehemiah, after inspecting the walls, now started to build the project. He went into the, the, the wall building a project. In Nehemiah chapter 3, we see how he started building the wall. In Nehemiah chapter 4, the enemy came with oppositions. And the, the enemy was called Sambalat. Sambalat came and started ridiculing Nehemiah. Uh, do you think you can make it? Telling Nehemiah you cannot make it. Even in Nehemiah chapter 2, that ridiculing of Sambalat already started there. He came again in Nehemiah chapter 4. And the enemy was using the voice of Sambalat to attack Nehemiah by discouraging him. In Nehemiah chapter 2, Nehemiah hear the voice of the Sambalat telling him, you cannot do it. You cannot make it. Look at you. <laughs> Many of you, people are telling you, you can't make it. Nehemiah made it. As he was building the project, as Sambalat saw that in spite of all the opposition that this man was making it. Then the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 1. When Sabalat heard that they were rebuilding the wall, he became angry 
and was greatly incensed. In other words, his anger increased. And uh, what did he do? He cornered, ganged up, ganged up with so many people to come and attack Nehemiah. My dear friends in Christ, in Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 2, the Bible tells us that Sambalat and Geshen sent this word to Nehemiah, Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But they were scheming to harm me. You see that? When they tried to destroy the project, they could not. They now wanted to kill Nehemiah. And so they told him, come, visit us in some so place so that we can talk with you. Let us make friends. Mm. But it was a plot to kill Nehemiah. But God put the wisdom in Nehemiah. And Nehemiah said, I am too busy for you. <laughs> Jesus, I am carrying on a great project and I cannot go down. Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 3. I am carrying on on a great project and I cannot go down. Why should the work stop? Because of you. My dear friends in Christ, Nehemiah was a very focused man. If you must serve the Lord, you must be focused. Trials will come, attack will come, but you must be focused. The saints that we celebrated today, uh, in spite of all the tribulations that came their way, they were focused. They did not relent. They continued to trust God. Mother Fesica, I'm praying for you this month. That no matter what you're passing through, no matter the challenges that will come your way this month, no matter the obstacle that will come this month, may God see you through. That project will be completed. The purpose of the fasting and prayers we are currently embarked on is that this project, this war, shall be rebuilt. And so shall it be that as this prayer is going on, the walls of my life, the broken walls, shall be rebuilt. And nothing shall stop it in the name of Jesus. Every street of Sambalat that wants to intimidate me, that wants to make me to look focused, I stand against them in the name of Jesus. I shall make it in the name of Jesus. We decree that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I cover that project with the blood of Jesus. I shall make it till the end in the name of Jesus. I shall make it to the end of the fast in the name of Jesus. I shall complete this project in the name of Jesus. Every bit of distraction will not succeed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We cover ourselves, word of Jesus. We cover the message, word of Jesus. We decree that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Father, may your name be glorified. Holy Father, we thank you for what you have done through this prayer. Blessed be your name, Papa. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, mighty Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, please continue to pray for your ministry as we have discussed in Jesus' name. Amen. We cover our Savior of Jesus. We cover our choir and family board of Jesus. We lift him up in prayer. We pray that God will replenish him, that God will strengthen him, that God will fortify him, that God will give him courage and strength in the name of Jesus. Pray that he will not give up in the name of Jesus. May the power of God continue to empower him the more in the name of Jesus. We pray that God will make a way for us in this ministry. In the name of Jesus, we cover him and his family with the blood of Jesus. May this great thing God have started in his life, in his ministry, blossom to the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Father, replenish your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, his goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. 
and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever.